All right, let's talk Texas A&M Aggies here for a little bit. Look, Aggies fans, I apologize of me wearing the orange. That's 100% an accident, not intended at all. But let's talk Aggies football here. Obviously, this has been a heck of an offseason for Texas A&M. Moving on to new head coach Mike Elko. There's been a lot of big moves with Texas A&M. Some of them are already paying big dividends. Let's go into one in particular that's already doing awesome for an A&M and should have a big impact both in the short and long term. Let's pull up this report right here and get right into it. All right, from the report, 24-7 Sports' is Brad Crawford did an article on the top 10 recruiters in college football based on the results for the 2024 recruiting cycle at their current venues, as well as their previous, previous stops if they moved on after the 2023 season. New Texas A&M receivers coach Holman Wiggins finished second overall with nine signees between his current gig as well as his previous one with the Tide. First-year coach Mike Elko swiped Alabama's top recruiter of the cycle in January to be the Aggies' co-offensive coordinator in 2024. That personal move came before, really important here, Nick Saban announced his retirement. Wiggins is, crediting with de- is credited with developing five first-round NFL draft picks during his career with the Crimson Tide, including Jalen Waddell, number six overall, Devontae Smith, number 10, Henry Ruggs, number 12, Jamison Williams, also number 12, and Jerry Judy, number 15, all that per Gigum 24-7's Andrew Hattersley. Uh, the report goes on to say his nine signees averaged a 93 rating per prospect, which is absolutely redonkulous. Wiggins' biggest move after coming to College Station was the help he provided in getting four-star Houston area product Ashton Bethel Roman, obviously a huge get, after he asked out of his letter intent with Arkansas, where he signed in December. Look, these are the moves that don't get all the headlines, but hiring the right assistants to help in the recruiting and development is arguably the most important thing a head coach can make. And I think that's the theme that we're seeing here. Mike Elko making a lot of smart moves. They're kind of flying under the radar, but I think it's really good stuff. I'm going to get in more detail on the other side. But first, A&M fans, now that the 2024 recruiting cycle is pretty much in the books, in the comment section below, give us the one recruit you expect to have a big impact early for Texas A&M. They've got 17 new guys, I believe, plus potentially any walk-ons coming into the fold. So give us the one new Texas A&M Aggie that you think will have a big impact in 2024 and put them in the comment section below. But going back to Holman Wiggins here, let's pull up a picture of him. This is he, him from his time in Alabama. I want to focus on one of the errors that a lot of coaches make when they go to these big-time programs, and Texas A&M is obviously a big-time program. We've seen this with a number of coaches at uh, Tennessee. We've seen it with a lot of debacles at Florida, right? We've seen, you look at Auburn's a good example. Gus Malzahn had some issues after some early success. Now we see it with Hugh Freeze. Auburn's kind of a dumpster fire right now. The reality is a lot of these head coaches come into these big programs and they don't bring in the right assistants. So they can't recruit and develop. We forget in the college football landscape that we're, we're just so head coach centric. We're like, Nick Saban is great. He does everything, you know. Uh, Jim Harbaugh was fantastic at Michigan. He did everything, but Jimbo Fisher didn't get it done. You know, things like that. But in reality, the head coach, you get pulled in so many directions. It's, it's really just sort of like a CEO kind of role where you've got all your guys underneath you actually doing the legwork. You've got to do a lot of the bureaucratic stuff, the administrative stuff. You've got to do the PR stuff, the, the shaking hands, the meeting people, taking the pictures, right? That kind of stuff. That takes up a lot of your time. And that's not counting any game plan or weak coaching. So when it comes time to actually recruit, the head coach really doesn't get involved a whole heck of a lot, at least not in the early and middle stages where it really can matter. Where it really matters then is having the right assistance to go out and get it done, to not just find good recruits, because Jimbo Fisher and his staff certainly did that, but it's finding recruits that fit your program, that can be developed into future stars, become good recruits to stars. That's the thing, right? It's not just getting four or five star guys. You got to get these four or five star athletes and develop them to play like four or five star guys one year, two, three years down the road. A&M had some success with that, but a lot of failures. A lot of guys transferred out. That was one of the hidden secrets of Alabama, and now we see it at Georgia. It's not so much that they got all the great talent, which they certainly did, but it's the fact they did such a good job developing it. And that's Wiggins' most underrated trait. He is so good at developing wide receiver talent. I think he'll do a phenomenal job at Texas A&M. And I think A&M, with the fact they can focus now on developing as well as recruiting, will fix a lot of the problems going forward. Because I think that was their biggest issue. I think they had the number one ranked recruiting class maybe of all time just a couple of years ago. Just a lot of those guys couldn't develop. Jimbo Fisher couldn't develop those guys. And by say Jimbo Fisher, again, look at me. I'm, I'm blaming Fisher, but in reality, it was the assistants, right? Wiggins is one of those guys who's one of those great assistants. You don't become a, you're not on Nick Saban's staff for a long time without being a great assistant. And it was a huge get for Mike Elko to bring him over to College Station. It's one of those moves that you don't really think about it. It kind of doesn't go noticed for a long time. But it's 
these kind of hires that can separate the average from the good, the good from the great, and the great from the dynasties. Again, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's critically important to get these key assistants right. Wiggins, throughout his career, great at developing, great at recruiting. He will have a huge impact at Texas A&M for such a long time, as long as he's there, and we're already seeing the early dividends of it. And look, 2024, the regular season, there's going to be some bumps and bruises, right? You got new head coach, Elko, coming into the fold. How things are going to shake out, it's going to be a lot of you know good and bad mixed together, figure things out. But what Wiggins is doing, and what more importantly, what Elko is doing, allowing and bringing in great assistants like Wiggins and allowing them to do their thing, I think puts this program in a really strong place. And I feel a whole lot better today in this offseason about Texas A&M and their future of the Aggies than I did at any point over the past couple seasons. And I think that's the main takeaway here at Texas A&M. The future is bright in College Station because of hires of guys like Holtman Williams.